living in a small apartment, it can be difficult to play retro games at a moment's notice. With space being limited, I have to store the majority of my consoles. That being said, I wanted a way to enjoy my retro games on a whim. For those of you who grew up during the 80s and 90s, you'll be familiar with the infamous AV cart. When a teacher rolled this into class, we all knew it was going to be a fun day. So I decided to make one of my own, with a retro gaming twist. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my attempt at making a retro gaming AV cart. I've actually been planning on making this for a while now and I slowly acquired all the parts to make it happen. Now, you may be asking, Tito, why on earth would you be making an AV cart? Well, that's a great question. So I live in a relatively small one bedroom apartment and I unfortunately don't have the space to have all my retro consoles set up. I have them mostly stored away in these large bins, which are airtight to keep them in good condition. But when I want to play one, I have to take the console out of storage, grab the AV and power cable, and of course a controller, then set it up. This is a bit of a chore and sometimes discourages me from playing these games. So I thought how cool would it be to have a setup with a bunch of my consoles already hooked up in a small and nimble enough package that I can move around the apartment and stow away when not needed. So that's what I'll be showing you today. This will be my attempt at building an AV cart, but of course with a retro gaming twist. Now I have a few goals with this project. First, it has to be small. Second, I gotta be able to have at least five consoles hooked up to it at once. Third, it's gotta be able to hold some accessories such as controllers. And lastly, it's gotta look decent and be organized, meaning cable management will be front and center. Anywho, if you enjoy learning about retro gaming mods or fun projects like this one, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more weekly videos just like this one. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I put this retro gaming AV cart together along with all the items I purchased to make it happen. I'll discuss the features of the cart and whether I met all my goals for this project go over some of the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. Now because this is a rather large project, I'm going to need a little extra space. So I'm going to move over to my living room. Come on, let's go. So the first thing I got to do is move some furniture out of the way to get a large working area. I'm leaving my carpet here so that I don't scratch or mar the wood floor below. Next, here you can see me opening the boxes containing all the components for the cart. It's definitely heavy duty. This is the wood top for the cart and is completely optional. All this does is give the cart a nicer aesthetic. These are the metal rods, which will serve as the supports for the shelving. Now, the first thing we're going to do is install these plastic shims onto the metal rods. Be sure the shims lock into the grooves on the rod and are oriented so that the arrow points towards the top of the cart. These will determine the position and height of the shelves. The first set we will be installing all the way at the bottom for the bottom shelf. Set the shims to the same level on all four rods. Now slide the rods through the holes on each corner of the shelf as shown. Go ahead and install the shims for the next shelf. I went ahead and measured the space I needed in between each shelf in order to fit my desired consoles. Each groove is set at approximately one inch apart. Do this for all remaining shelves. With all the shelves installed, flip the cart over so we can install the casters. All you need to do is fasten them into the bottom of the rods as if they were a large screw. Then tighten them with the included wrench. And do this for the three remaining casters. Flipping the cart back upright, go ahead and drop in the wooden top. 
So this is the cart fully assembled. In my opinion, it looks pretty nice. I like the chrome finish of the wire shelves and the wooden top. As you can see, I have three shelves to hold my consoles, so let's go ahead and start putting them in. On the bottom shelf, I'll be putting in my Pioneer Laser Active, which is basically a glorified Sega Genesis and Sega CD console. Oh, and it plays Laserdisc games, but we're gonna save that for another video. On the next shelf up, I have my consoleized Neo Geo MVS and Super Nintendo. And on the top shelf, I'll place my NES and Gold Star 3DO consoles. And of course, the PVM will be placed on the wooden top. Next order of business is to connect all of the AV cables as well as all the power cables to the consoles. We'll worry about cable management next. In order to manage all these cables, I bought a pack of these Velcro straps. I first attach the Velcro strap to the wire shelf like so. Then grab the wires and secure them to the shelf. I made sure to leave some slack in the wire so that I can move the console around if needed. Now just rinse and repeat until all the wires are neatly secured to the cart itself. Once all the wires are nicely arranged, grab the cable management box. This will house our surge protector and keep the setup nice and neat. The surge protector I'll be using is this nice APC unit featuring 8 plugs, which is more than I need. Simply place the surge protector into the cable management box and start plugging everything in. Once everything is plugged in, place the box into the bottom shelf of the cart as shown. Now it's time to plug in all the composite cables. I'm using this pan long switcher box with 8 total inputs which works perfectly for this setup. Once all your inputs are connected, let's start the final round of cable management. As you can see, all the excess wires are stored inside the cable management box, keeping our cart nice and tidy. And this is the final result. Not bad at all. Now, the last thing I'll be installing is this canvas organizer, which will hold all of my controllers and accessories. It's simply held in place with some Velcro straps, securing the wooden dowel to the top shelf frame. Once in place, I can drop in all the controllers I'll need for my particular setup. Fantastic. Man, this honestly exceeded my expectations. I have to say that I am really loving how this turned out. This is a very condensed retro gaming AV cart and is ready to game at a moment's notice. Having all these consoles on wheels and already hooked up to my PVM is super convenient. While this works for my particular situation to save space, I can see this as a really cool thing to have for a child's playroom since it can stow away super easily. All right, let me start off by giving you a quick summary of the features of this cart. First, we have the switcher box, which makes it extremely easy to change the inputs to the PVM for the console you wanna play. Right now, I have four consoles connected to the switcher with an S-Video cable from the 3DO connected directly to the PVM for slightly better video quality. Here, I added this canvas organizer on the side to hold all of my controllers. It can also be used to hold other accessories like USB cables to charge the wireless controllers. The wheels roll very smoothly over surfaces such as hardwood and tiles, although depending on the weight, it may be difficult to move it around on carpeted surfaces. So you may want to get larger casters if you do have carpet. The wheels feature an integrated locking mechanism to keep the cart in place, which is great. The wireframe design of the shelves also allow for increased airflow, which will help keep your console somewhat cooler and also won't collect dust like a traditional shelf would. And lastly, all these consoles are hooked up to a surge protector, so it just takes a single plug to power up everything. I've also installed this Velcro piece here to manage the surge protector cable and keep things nice and tidy. 
So there really isn't too much else. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a cart, but for my purposes, it worked out quite well. With that said, let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, having all these consoles set up ready to go is just awesome. It gets quite a few of my consoles out of storage and in use. It also allowed me to move my PVM off my desktop, so now I have a lot more space to work. I also think that since I have several consoles hooked up to the PVM, I will get a lot more use out of it. I'm already thinking of upgrading it since it is on the smaller side. If you have any suggestions for an affordable and larger CRT monitor, leave me a comment below with a specific model. I think something at least 14 inches in size would be best for this setup. Now, if you don't use a laser active on the bottom shelf like me, you can probably fit two more consoles here. And you can probably put another one here next to the monitor. So in actuality, there is potential to have up to seven consoles hooked up at once, and that's pretty awesome to think about. The ability to move this anywhere is also extremely convenient. I can set it up almost anywhere and just play. And when I'm done, I can stow it away in the closet, freeing up space. Not only that, I can actually move the cart next to my entertainment center and connect all these consoles via the switch panel to my HDTV and play on a larger screen. It'll be composite video, but this is still an available option. And the last thing is that this cart is extremely sturdy. I would feel totally confident using a much larger CRT on this setup. Okay, now let's quickly go over the cons. And in actuality, there aren't too many. Now of course, I think this will heavily depend on the setup you desire, but for me, this works perfectly. It holds my laser active system, which is a must, and it can accommodate a larger CRT if I choose to upgrade my setup. I suppose the only con is the price of the cart itself. At about 170 bucks, it certainly wasn't cheap. But that's also because I bought the wood top, which, while it makes the cart look better, added about $45 to the total, and it isn't necessary for the overall functionality. Regardless, having this retro gaming AV cart is certainly going to change the way that I game. I think mostly for the better. So there you have it. My attempt at making a retro gaming AV cart modeled after those sweet AV carts of the 80s and 90s. As always, I'm curious about what you all think. Will any of you be building one of these for your retro video game collection, or do any of you already have one? If you do, share a photo with the community on my new Discord server. I just started it recently, so definitely drop by. I'll see you there. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.